Anyway, I'm, as you can see, I, I am clearly still alive. I'm not beheaded on the internet, so we're going to go back to Islam. Now, now you're getting nervous now, aren't you? Right? You're like, now the tension's in the room. Don't worry, you don't have to worry about it. Because you've got to talk about it, folks. Because, and you, you don't have to be scared to talk about it, because it seems it's an issue that no one knows how to deal with, isn't it? It's like nobody knows what you can say, what you can't say, and then there's people out there who just say too much. Who just say too much, and it brings, makes you feel very uncomfortable, because they're saying things that remind you of certain other things from history, and you don't want to sort of go down that road. But what the people on the far right will have you believe, the reason most people don't talk about it is because you don't know a Muslim, you don't know anything about Islam, and a bomb's never gone off within a thousand fucking miles of you, so you're just going to get on with your life. There's too many things to fucking worry about in your day. So you're not going to worry about it, okay? But there are people on the far right would have you believe that the reason we don't talk about Islam in this country is because of political correctness. Political correctness has gone mad, and when people don't want to talk about Islam, people don't want to talk about Muslim, they're too scared to say it because they're too politically correct. But what they don't realise is political correctness has actually had an effect on Islamic terrorism. It has. I'll show it to you. I'll prove it to you. Just look at the major terrorist attacks over the last 15 years. We'll start with 9-11. We all remember that. It was the day Allah went pro. Right? <laughs> it was, wasn't it? Right, okay. You've never heard of Islam or Muslims before 9-11, now suddenly they're everywhere, every fucking where you go. Allah went pro, he rose up the ranks, got promoted, right, okay. So 9-11, now the interesting thing about 9-11 is, is it changed the way we talk. Because if I say, I've just said 9-11, it's two numbers, you know exactly what I mean. We all know what I mean, go anywhere in the world and say 9-11, and everyone knows what I'm saying. Even though, for every other country except America, 9-11 didn't happen for us. It was 11-9. <laughs> weren't it? It was 11 It weren't 9-11. It was 11-9. But we collectively, as the rest of the world, said, we'll call it 9-11 because our attitude is like, it's the Americans. They don't know. Right? <laughs> the rest of the world's attitude to America is that of chip parents of a spoilt child who've given up. <laughs> he wants 9-11. Let him have 9-11. We don't care. <laughs> Right? And that was, and that, but that resonated because you, a few years later, you can tell that resonated in, in you know, uh, because a few years later in London, 2005, when did they have their terrorist attack? 7th of July, 7 7. They can't fuck that one up for us, can they? Uh... Doesn't matter what way round you fucking put it. So already Islamic terrorists are being more polite. <laughs> They're thinking these things through. Seven, I tell you what, seven seven was an interesting one for me because I was living in London at the time of the terrorist attack, right? And uh, and the first person to call me on seventh of July seven seven two thousand five was my granddad, who, who my granddad who comes from Derry, right? Because my last name's Coughlin, it's an Irish name. He comes from Derry, Northern Ireland, right? He rings me up, right? He phones me up and goes, Richard, what's going on down there? I said, it's terrible, Granddad. There's all these bombs going off, these terrorist attacks. He goes, he goes, terrorists blowing up London. Jesus Christ! How fucking nineteen eighties is that? <laughs> <laughs> the Irish, we were blowing London up before it's fucking cool. I'll have you know. <laughs> and you, the English, you used to make fun of the Irish for being stupid. Unlike the Muslims, we worked out you have to move away from the bomb before it fucking goes off. <laughs> My granddad, the hipster terrorist, right? <laughs> so already, right, again, but already you've got this the resonant, you can see the terrorists are thinking about how everything else affects people. And this carried on right up until a couple of years ago when you had the Boston Marathon bombing. Uh, it's a bit of a weird subject for me to talk about initially because I've got a mate who lives in Boston who was actually running in the marathon. He was near the finish line when the bomb went off, right? He actually finished fourth and 15th and 27th. It was a huge explosion. Right? Oh. <laughs> Let's not fall out now, right, okay? <laughs> you, di you didn't get bothered by the pig fucking stuff during the... <laughs> going to Sweden and fucking your sister, we can get through this, okay? <laughs> but no, so like, the Boston Marathon bombing, it was a weird one, and the reason it was interesting is because we didn't know who'd done it for four days until after it happened. 
And you can see after a while, everyone's trying to be neutral and go, oh, I wonder who did this. But after four days, you can see everyone's political agenda seeping through on both sides, right? Everyone on the far right's going, God, I hope it's a brown Muslim foreigner. God, I hope it's a brown Muslim foreigner. And everyone on the far left is going, God, I hope it's a white domestic terrorist. God, I hope it's a white domestic terrorist. Was it a white domestic terrorist? Was it a brown Muslim foreigner? Was it a brown Muslim foreigner? Was it a white domestic terrorist? It was two white Chechnyan Muslims who were naturalised American citizens. <laughs> that is political correctness gone fucking mad, folks. <laughs> Thanks, Obama. Now we don't know who we're supposed to fucking hate. <laughs> Just goes to show, when you try to please everyone, you end up fucking annoying everyone, okay? <laughs> But we don't know how to fucking talk about it. And it's not just the fact that it, it's, it's, it affects people in a way that is just, sometimes it's scary to see how, this is why people do terrorism. It works. You can see that it fucking works, right? And the best example, I'll give you one example. Now, this is one example of many, but this is, this is a YouTube comment that I saw, right? And I, I don't just want to show this to you. I want to uh, submit this to the British Historical Society. I want them to put this in a time capsule. Right? So that hundreds of years from now, people can look back and realise the level of psychosis and dementia that we had reached as a society when it came to the issue of Islamic terrorism. Right? It's, a, it's by a guy called King Forty Kong. It's a bit of unpleasant racist language at the start, but, but persevere. Okay? He says, dirty packy Muslim and Eastern Europeans have ruined this once great nation. Okay? Pretty standard, isn't it, comments over right? <laughs> Then he goes on. There won't be many Argos stores left in future. <laughs> <laughs> They'll all be replaced by fucking mosques. <laughs> <laughs> How fucking paranoid do you have to be about Islamic terrorism? How much crack do you have to smoke the night before? To get to the point where one day you're walking down the street and you go past an Argos store and go, Won't be long now! <laughs> the end is nigh! <laughs> you won't be able to go in there soon without taking your fucking shoes off! <laughs> if you're a woman, you've got to wear a beekeeper's outfit and if you're blaking a beard down to your fucking nipples. Make the most of it, people. But that's not... The, the comment itself is not the crazy part, right? It's not, it's not the horrible racism at the start. It's not the conspiratorial alarmism. It's not the fact he's getting nationalistically tumescent over an Argos store. It's the fact, what's amazing about this comment is the fact that it was posted on a fucking Grumpy Cat video. <laughs> and it was the top rated comment. <laughs> What was it about a fucking grumpy cat video that made this bloke think, the revolution starts here, this is... He finally gets me, this guy, right? Was he just looking at the video, was he just watching a video and went, wow, that cat looks very, very grumpy. I bet his local Argos was recently turned into a mosque. It's the only explanation, right? But that's it, that, you could dismiss that and say that's just some guy on the internet. But the thing is, there are people who we expect to take seriously, who are involved in politics, who have views that are equal to that, if not just a little uh, notch or two under. There's one guy who started, started following me on the internet. His name's Joshua Bonehill. Is there anyone familiar with him? Has some of you heard of him? Have you heard of Bonehill? He's fucking... He's actually in prison at the moment. He was arrested. He's a, he was arrested because he organised a Stop the Judeification of Britain march. And only he turned up, right? So... <laughs> so, that, so, yeah, so that was it. But, now, there's lots of things people like to constantly try and associate and make you paranoid about Muslims. There's lots of other things. It's not just terrorism. Right? There's lots of things involving child sex gangs. So let's talk about that, child grooming, child sex gangs and all that other stuff, right? And not to say it doesn't happen, but they want you to be scared of all of them and think they're all going to fucking happen. And sometimes you get people who make stuff up and they make up these stories and, and you try, I'm trying to think, what is the point of this story? What is he getting at, right? This is an example. This is what Joshua Bonehill sent me personally on Twitter. He went, so... Serial killer Ian Huntley has converted to Islam, and we're paying for him. Right. Now, first of all, 
I didn't know Islam charged, right? I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know that was in there. I like the fact this guy's basically saying, I didn't mind paying for this serial killing child rapist when he was a Christian, but now I want my tax money fucking deducted out of his fucking... I don't, what is he, what's he trying to get? I don't get... Now, the thing is, Ian Huntley hasn't converted to Islam, so he's making this up. What's it? It's like it's all going, Darth Vader and Sauron are going to unite as one. But I don't get, what is he trying to, Ian Huntley's converted to Islam, so what? I don't know about you, but I made up my mind about Ian Huntley <laughs> when he killed those two girls. That was enough, it, oh, maybe I'm a bit narrow-minded here, but I considered that the child killing was enough information for me to come to a conclusion about Ian Huntley, he's not a very nice man, I wouldn't go out for a pipe with him, right? <laughs> Joining Islam has not swayed the fucking dial one way. <laughs> I can't believe anyone would have read this in the newspaper and gone, Ian Huntley's joining Islam, well he's gone too fucking far now, <laughs> I'm sending my fan club membership back first thing in the fucking morning, I can tell you. There's another guy, I'll show you one other guy, there's another guy, and he's, this guy's a bit more popular, uh, Tommy Robinson. You're familiar with Tommy Robinson, former leader of the English Defence League, recently gone to court, tried as an adult, can you believe it, right? <laughs> <laughs> but Tom, the, the EDL were fantastic, I, I, I used to, I followed them for ages, right, because, not, not literally, but I, it was, what was funny, they came to their fucking, the first time they came to Brighton in 2010, they came, they, they, were, they were posting all these photos they were taking uh, on their Facebook page, and one of them was, look at the size of this mosque in Brighton, it was the pavilion. <laughs> <laughs> If you've got a giant fucking turnip on top of it, they thought, hey, it's a fucking bastard, look at the size of this bastard, right? <laughs> now, I'm talking about that, that, that that's an example, there was a cu case a couple of years ago where there was a real story of a Pakistani Muslim who was found guilty of child grooming, child sex offences, okay? And he was and, uh, not one of these Johnny-come-latelys like Ian Huntley, who just <laughs> kills two children and then converts to Islam to be cool. No, no, this guy, this guy did it properly, okay? So. Now, the thing was, when this guy was arrested, he said to the police that he hated white people and wanted them all to die, right? Which is at least forthright, right? Okay, so this apparently, the fact the guy said this, then, so he wants to kill, hates all white people, wants them to die, technically makes him a racist, I guess. So this was apparently the real issue with Tommy Robinson. He tweeted out, just when you thought you couldn't get lower than a pedo, we get racist pedos. <laughs> hashtag Islam, hashtag Pakistani, right? And if you can't see this, he's put an apostrophe on pedos. <laughs> I won't nitpick. Now, now, what Tommy's trying to say here is that because this guy is a racist pedo, that means he's lower down on the moral compass, right? The moral spectrum than a non-racist pedo. But we, this is the thing, he's actually wrong. Because when you think about it, and you really all have to think about this one, folks, because I'm going out on a limb with this, right? Racist pedos are better than non-racist pedos. Because if you're a racist pedo, you're only going to target children who are the same colour as you, which means there are going to be a lot of children who are perfectly safe around you. Now that is... <laughs> I'm not saying that it's a good thing in general, right? I don't, I don't want Pakistani children, I don't want any children to be molested, but what I'm saying is, you know, if you're a racist pedo, you, you know, there are more children are safe around you, there are less children who are likely to be targeted by you, as opposed to one of these politically correct egalitarian liberal pedos, right? Who's gonna fuck anyone of any colour, regardless, because of it, it's political correctness gone mad. All I'm saying is, if we have to have pedos, and unfortunately we do, let's have racist ones, right? That's all. You know I'm right. You know I'm fucking right. We're going to go down the non swing of the local prison with a copy of Mind Cap and some BMP literature tomorrow, right? Okay. No, you know, I like the fact that it took me, like, you got a round of applause. That was a bit too much for that one. I don't want to... <laughs> laugh is fine for that joke. Round of applause makes me feel a bit uncomfortable. <laughs> but there are, you know, racism is a problem, you know, particularly on the internet. And there's lots of campaigns on the internet to try and stop racism. Here's an example of one. It's called Racism Stops With Me. Now, you know when you type something into Google, you get your predictive searches of what the most... It's set up on what Google's algorithms are to what people mostly type in. And this is what has happened on this campaign. 
uh, they've typed in, why do black men? And it says, it's come up with predictive searches, why do black men abandon their children, beat their women, commit so many crimes, disrespect women? Right. Now, I fully support the motives and the, and the message of this campaign, but I am a skeptic, you've got to be fair, so I went on Google just to check what, what happened when I typed, why do black men, into Google. I don't know if it's something to do with the searches I put in, but when I put why do black men into Google, I got why do black men like white women and have bigger willies? <laughs> <laughs> now, that, that, that technically is racist, but let's be honest, never been a long queue of black guys willing to step up and debunk that one, have they? <laughs> I've always been pretty comfortable with that one, haven't they? And I don't blame them, right, quite frankly, but... But the thing is, right, I understand, right, I'm, I'm, it's totally dumb, folks, so I'm going to tell you one more thing. Uh, I understand that it's difficult these days when, you know, people do feel that political correctness has gone mad. And I do understand that there's probably people in here, you've probably been got, you know, pounced on or you've probably got in trouble for saying something that you had, you never meant it to be hateful or bigoted, you didn't mean or think you were going to offend someone, you just may be out of touch, you didn't realise, you know, it's a, that's it, that word means something different than where you've grown up. And you've now been you've now been labelled as a bigot because of it, right? It's happened to me before, and I, I understand that. It's not, no, it has, believe it or not. But, <laughs> you know, you know, but I understand that that's annoying. But what I will say to you is this: I think that's more preferable than the other end of the spectrum that we used to have, which is to a point where you're so politically incorrect that you're actually completely socially and historically unaware all the time. And I'm going to give you one example, a good example of, 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 of what I'm talking about. There's a, there's a fashion designer, a clothing store, uh, you've got one in Brighton, it's called Zara, Z-A-R-A. Are you familiar with this? Yeah, 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 yeah. of course you are. Mostly the women, because that's it, they sell women's clothes. But um, they do sell children's clothes as well. Now last year, Zara introduced this new line of children's clothes. Uh, and one particular item was a jumper that was for children aged three to five years old. And now I'm going to show you a picture of this jumper. Now you need to keep this in mind. This wasn't a design that was made, never manufactured and then leaked out. That could be forgivable, that's not really a story. This was not only designed, it was approved, it was manufactured en masse, it was marketed and advertised, it was fucking packed up and shipped out to all the Zara stores, it was put on the fucking shelves of every Zara across Europe and the world, and it took a customer on the first day of the sales to come in and point out what was wrong with this item of clothing. And again, I get the impression I don't need to fucking tell you exactly what's wrong uh, or why someone might be offended by this item of clothing. <laughs> This was literally a job. Now, first off, first off, they were marketing this as a French sheriff's jumper. <laughs> now that deserves a fucking rant on its own, surely? The French well-known cowboy culture there, haven't they? <laughs> but, this, but this is what they were marketing. A customer had to point out what was wrong with this. Well, I mean, I'm assuming they were. I mean, for all I know, the customer was going, those jumpers, do you do them in bulk? <laughs> a couple of million of them maybe <laughs> and, and there might be one or two holocaust historians or experts in here who want to quibble over the fact that ah the fucking stripes are going the wrong way in the concentration those stripes are going horizontally in the concentration camps the stripes were going vertically yes they were I'm going to give them a mulligan on that one but I think we can say it may, the, the stripes were indeed vertical in, uh, in the concentration camps which is probably why they all look so thin in all those pictures that you see right but the <laughs> <laughs> no because there is a problem with anti-semitism look i'll tell you I, I went on you know google maps you go on google maps you type in something and it comes up and tells you a location right? i went on google maps and i typed in jews in london and look it's got them all fucking listed there. <laughs> Google telling me where the fucking Jews are all are. I don't want to, it's a bit fucking dodgy, isn't it? I don't want to. They're not salmon. We don't need to track them for migration purposes, do we? It's in London, spread out a bit as well, lads. Have you seen your new mayor? Fucking getting it sorted right now. But no. So you've got that. So you've got this problem with this jumper in Zara. Now, 
The problem is, with this jumper, is you could put it down to, look, we all have a brain fart, we've all missed something, haven't we? We've all mi missed something that we look back and go, how the fuck did I miss that? That was blindingly fucking obvious, I should have seen that. It's possible on an infinite timeline, seven billion people on the planet, eventually everyone's brain fart is going to align, the sun is in the seventh <laughs> moon of Jupiter, and it just so happened that all of the people involved in Zara, all those thousands of people, all missed it, and they didn't realise, and then they got pointed out, like, fucking hell, you're right, it does, it looks like that. But the problem with that is that Zara have, have done this before, right? A couple of years previously, Zara released this handbag, now, you're probably looking at that, it's a bit garish, there's nothing wrong with it. If I move my hand, can you see there's a bright green swastika on this handbag? Now, when this got released, and again, this was someone else designed and made this, this was a private uh, designer, and Zara's excuse was, well, we didn't see the bag from the other side, we only saw one side of it in a photo. I'm like, well, maybe, just maybe, ask them to bring two pictures on the off chance that they fucking crocheted Rodney King being curb on by a clansman on the other fucking side of the bag. <laughs> It'll save you a lot of PR problems in the future. Like they then got fucking, they then got sued by a Jewish and gay American who worked for them, right? and that all kicked off. But this, this all kicked off, and the president of Zara had to come out and make a public statement saying, like, you know, these things, you know, this, this, this was, we apologise for that. We're sorry for any offence. We didn't mean that. It's perfectly, you know, this, this was not intended to offend or upset anyone. Um, you know, and, and so we apologise for that. And we'll make sure it won't happen again in the future. He then finished because this was the end of the summer at the time, he finished by saying, well, you know, we do have a new range of winter clothes coming out, uh, which includes this balaclava. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm making that last bit up. He never brought this out. Right? <laughs> you, can't, you cannot buy this balaclava, right? You can't. But that's it's a joke I fucking tagged on the end of this. I want to make it, I want to make it clear to everyone in here, before anyone starts thinking, I didn't make that, right? That... I, I googled the word gollywog and this fucking thing popped up and I thought I'm having that and this is a gift falling in my lap here to finish this joke. I don't know who made this, I don't know why they made it, I don't want to know why they made it. But what I do know is this, this on its own would have made the video to Lionel Richie's Hello a lot more fucking entertaining. <laughs> That's the end of the show, folks. Before I finish, before I go, um, if there is a point to this show, and normally there isn't with my shows, but this is a fucking arts festival, so you've got to have some moral at the end of the story, right? Um, yeah, so I'm going to make one up, right? There is, a, there is a point to it. It's all about perception. Life is all about perception, and people are going to see what they want to see a lot of the time. A lot of people look at me and they'll see anti-white PC mangina. That's the title of the show. Some people look at me and see an junkie faget. Some people see every animal on the planet, right? It's okay, that's <laughs> Some people look at an Argos and see a mosque waiting to be developed. Some people look at a French sheriff jumper and don't see that it's a fucking Holocaust concentration kit outfit, right? Okay, but that's, and that's really, and you can't spend your whole life worrying about, like, trying to make everyone happy, worrying about all that. You don't have to do that, right? I learned this the hard way. When I was, two, I started writing this show in October 2014, and um, uh, yeah, I, and I started performing it in January 2015. And on, in January 2015, I had to perform this show for the first time in Manchester. I had to travel from Brighton up to Manchester, through London, through King's Cross Station, the day after the terrorist attacks in France on the offices of Charlie Hebdo and that fucking supermarket, right? So security is amped up at King's Cross Station. It's the busiest fucking train station in Europe. Security is amped up. Now, as you can see, I've got a beard, but at the time, this thing was down to about here, okay? I, it's, it's, it's winter, so I've got a puffer jacket on. I've got my bag with all my bits in it slung over my shoulder. I'm on my way to Manchester, so I look a bit pissed off, okay? So, <laughs> I've got that classic Arab frown thing going on, right? I look, so I'm expecting to get stopped by the police. I probably looked exactly like a photo fit going, look at this fucking bloke, arrest him, right? So, and I'm not going to moan about it because I'm like, I'm like they're going to look at me and see that, but I'm not going to moan because I've got nothing on me, I've got there's nothing they can do. So they stop me, predictably. I get off the escalator, I'm the underground, they stop me. But they go through my bag, and they're going through my bag over here, and I'm just sort of standing waiting for him to finish. And then I turned around, and the next sound you would have heard was my rectum prolapsing. <laughs> 
because I was greeted by the sight of a police officer going, what the fucking hell was this doing in your bag, sir? <laughs> <laughs>